You often say you need to stand out, you need to stand out. But what does it really mean to stand out as a graphic designer? In this video, we're going to dive into this crucial topic that most graphic designers can resonate with. And this is coming up. Hi everybody in the center and welcome to the channel over here. We make videos like this. If that is something that sounds like you're interested, can you consider that subscribing? In most cases, when you ask the top guys how to get clients, how to get jobs and all that, one thing that comes out most of the times is you need to stand out. So in this video, we're going to really look at what it means to stand out and some four key points that you need to consider if you want to stand out as a graphic designer. Now, let's start this off with this beautiful quote. And it says, if you can't win at being better, you can win by being different. Now, what does it mean to stand out as a graphic designer? Standing out or being different is basically about perspective. So standing out as a graphic designer is basically embracing your perspective and the elements that makes you and your work different. And in this case, your work is yours. What is that one thing that separates you from all the other graphic designers? There are so many graphic designers out there. But why should a particular company or why should an individual ask again to work with a graphic designer choose you? If you're not spotted that thing yet as a designer, you really need to sit down and figure this out because that is what is going to separate you from the numerous graphic designers out there. And after this video, with these four key things that I'm going to give to you, you are going to definitely figure this out. Now, in the world of graphic design, most people want to be better. That is fine. But then there is this myth about being better and Let's talk about that. Being better is often subjective in the design world. And this can easily be understandable because what works for one client may not necessarily work for another client. And even within us as designers, the approach that works for me may not necessarily work for you. So instead of trying to achieve an elusive standard that has been set or that normal standard that you feel like it has been set by people, why don't you focus on what makes your approach different? It's more like when you come into the design space afresh. People are already doing things. There are so many creatives out there and creative approaches out there. You start watching tutorials, you start learning from mentors and you start taking inspiration from that big people out there, their works. That is fine. But the problem is if you try to replicate their designs, if you try to go according to their style, you get overshadowed by them because of your sneak. They have the market, they've been in the system for a while and they know the ins and outs. So the probability that they are always going to have a fair advantage in the market or in the design space on social media is very high. And that is when you need to position yourself in such a way that you can stand out. It can be different. I think this is a very basic psychology because if you are trying to do just what everyone else is doing, why would a company hire you or why would an individual I want to hire you. Now, once you know this, you then ask yourself, how do you embrace being different? How do you stand out from the numerous graphic designers out there? How do you get better? How do you become different? In this part of the video, I'm going to walk you through four things that you need to consider if you want to be different in your graphic design. Journey. Point number one know your story you see i think about us as people is we all have our stories we all have battles that we are coming from we all have things that pushed us to the path that we are living on let me share a very quick story about me so after shs i used to work at the prison press okay i was working mainly on flyers funeral brochures and funeral limitations wedding limitations and all those things I wasn't really introduced to brands and branding, logo making and all those things. And this hugely had an impact on me. These days, I mostly work on flyers as against branding. There are people who also did internships in branding agencies and all those things, which have an influence on them that they are mostly into logo making and brand identity design. There are people who interned at product design agencies or agencies that mainly deals with product designs. And these are influenced their design journey to be product designers. I'll be getting to the point. So you should know your story. You should know your background, where you are coming from. You should know the people that you mostly mingle with. It's the environment that you are coming from. I'm not saying that this should entirely be your scope or your definition. You can, of course, go outside of the box, but these things should be a basic block that should 
inspire your creativity. So your experiences, your interests, your values, the things that you hold on dear to, this should be something that should influence your desire. Another thing about me is that I was brought up in the church. I'm a church boy. Okay, so you'd realize that most of the flyers that I've been making centers around church designs, church flyers, and all those stuff. I get to the point. So our values, our experiences, and where we are coming from should be an inspiration or should influence our work if we want to stand out. Now, point number two, you should stay curious. You know, they normally say that curiosity kills the cat. But in the graphic design space, curiosity don't necessarily kill the cat. You've had your story, you've had your experiences, but now you are growing. Do you need to be limited to those areas only? No, you need to be curious. You need to learn new trends, learn new innovation, learn new tools. The fact that I was brought up from a printing press background or a church background don't only mean that I should be working on church flyers only if I want to strive as a graphic designer. I get to the point. Your story should be the fundamental block that should inspire or influence your creativity. But as you grow, you need to be curious and to learn more. You need to want to delve into other parts of design so that you can stay abreast with the new trends or what is current in the graphic design system. But I'm not necessarily saying that you shouldn't be chasing trends, okay? You just need to be curious. It's more like doing a research into something. Once you research into it and you find out that it is something that is better, that will make you a better designer, you go for it. But if you find out that it is not really going to help you or it's not your thing you can just let go of it it is more like when you're starting out i received this question a lot what software or which software should i use Corel draw photoshop illustrator i mostly answer to this question that you can try all of them you can try almost anything especially when you are beginning but then as you progress you don't need to be a jack of all trees. You need to niche down. You need to sort things out. You need to just figure out what works for you and what will work for you. You just don't need to be stuck to all the, those things literally because you want to be curious all the time. Now the beautiful thing about being curious is it infuses your work with fresh ideas and it helps you to avoid the trap of seeingness, which I'll be talking more about in the next point. I forgot to turn this on. Alright, point number three. In order for you to be different, you need to build a signature style. Now, this may be a bit conflicting with the second point, but then I'll try as much as possible to explain this to you. Now, if you see instances where you see a particular design or a particular flyer and you are easily able to attribute it to that one designer out there. For instance, when I'm doing tutorials and I mention poppings, or whenever you hear poppings somewhere, most of the people that have been learning from this channel can easily attribute me to poppies. When I started out, it was Acrobat, and then I found poppies, and now I'm a poppies lover. And I believe for most people, whenever they hear poppies, they I come in mind. Well, I'm not I'm not trying to be popular here, but it's something that I've been using over and over and over again, and it, it has become more like a stamp. This is what we are talking about. You need to build a style. Let's say your style of work is mostly minimum. You like to use a lot more colors. You like to use a lot more stylish or stylized font. It is your style. You need to build a blueprint so that people can easily attribute it to you. And that breaks it up again that you don't just need to be like everyone else. Of course, when you're starting out, it can be very default but the thing is you see the more you watch tutorials the more you get inspiration you can just infuse them to create your own style one of the biggest problems with most of us that are learning through tutorials is that we get so used to the people that we are watching their tutorials such that we are not able to create our own style because if you are literally watching just my videos you may be tempted to create or design just like me but the best approach for you would be you watch a couple of these tutorials you watch tutorials from this person and then you infuse them together to create your own style. Whenever people come to me that they find it difficult to create their own designs when they are not watching tutorials, I just give them this clue that if you are seeking for inspiration from say Pinterest, you don't need to just pick one flyer and 
try to get all your inspiration from it. Get at least three to five flyers. Put them together. Now, you see, the way the person, the first person did the heading, as against the way the second person did the body, and the third person did the footer, or let's say, weigh up the dates, the time, and the location. These three flyers are going to be different on their own. But when you take these three and you put them together, definitely they are not the same flyer again. You've come out with your own idea. I think there's a very basic research principle, okay? You don't just need to pick it from one source. You pick different, different books or different, different flyers, and then you compare and contrast. Pick out what works for you and what don't work for you. So what I'm trying to say here is that as you begin your design journey, you may just go with your mentor or the person that you've been taking inspiration from. But as you progress, you need to build a signature style. However you're going to build that, it's going to be entirely up to you, but then you need to have a style that you can be identified with. Now, point number four, seek diverse inspiration. One mistake that we normally make as graphic designers is whenever we want to create flyers, we just want to be limited to a circle of influence. For instance, whenever you about creating it, today, you go to Pinterest, you go to the hands, you search for church flyer designs on Google, or perhaps you just search for cloud flyer designs on Google, then this is the basic approach that we've been using. But we need to go beyond that. You see, design goes beyond just your circle. Design goes beyond features, behinds and Google in general. It needs to pay attention to technology, culture, and all these things. Let me tell you something. You see, one of the easiest way I'm able to identify colors and I'm able to blend colors very well is by looking at the paintings on buildings. God. Some of these painters are so creative. They blend colors so well. When you are walking around like areas that are beautiful buildings, you just pay attention to the colors that the, the painters have been using. And these, some of these things goes a long way to inspire our next project. Not to even talk about nature. There are so many ways nature inspires our design. You see fashion design inspires the way they sometimes blend colors to make your outfit very nice. Yes, it needs pay attention to those things. Is it when you are in the Trotsky and somebody will be wearing a very nice outfit or you see that particular thing that is not way really related to design but the colors or the font or those things that were used on it are very appealing. Yes, you need to pay attention to those things because all of these things provide you with unexpected ideas that set your designs apart. Now, this is a bonus point. Aside from all of these things, your work, your design, and all those things, you need to really work on yourself as well. You need to work on your communication. You need to work on your delivery. You need to work on your client relationship. I'm going to make another full video about this later on. But then you should understand this. Your skills, your designs are not just enough to set you apart or set, make you different. Some people are very good, they design really well, but what is not getting them clients is they are not able to communicate or they are not able to market themselves very well. They are not able to present themselves to the right people. And if you don't work on some of these things, you may design very neatly, you may be the best designer out there, but to get the right people to patronize you or to get the right companies to work with you, may be a problem. So whilst you are working on your software skills, your design skills, you should be working on your soft skills at speaking, writing, and human relations. So yeah, ultimately standing out as a designer is purely about authenticity. It's just a matter of showing the world your creative self and letting that show through your work. You don't really need to do that much. You just need to stay true to yourself and let your values, your backgrounds, and everything around you influence your design. Again, remember this, if you can't win at being better, which is most likely very impossible, you can win by being different. Now here's a very simple question to you. What is that one thing that you think that it makes you stand out as a graphic designer? I'll be waiting in the comment section to read about your comments and let me know in the comment section if you found this video helpful. Remember, your creativity is a gift that has been given to you to sell the world with. The world is awaiting your creativity.
go out there keep creating and keep shining thank you so much for watching this video if this was helpful subscribe to the channel i'll be so very much appreciate it if you have any questions if you have any topics that you'd want me to touch on leave it in the comment section i'll be glad to talk about it thanks again for watching i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and bye